Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome back to Total War Warhammer 2 The Shadow and the Blade, where today we're going to kill some demon ogres. This is going to be, or dragon ogres rather, this is going to be a slightly new experience. Uh, I'm not going to bother spending any food on Menace Below Charges because I don't think that the Menace Below Charges we use here are going to accomplish anything. We're going to bring them up and they're going to get scared and die immediately or run away, so, you know, whatever. Uh, I do think we should win this battle. I guess I don't know exactly how much siege stuff they have built up, but this looks favorable. If we're smart about how we apply our storm vermin, uh, the dragon ogres shouldn't be a huge, huge problem. And we have uh, lightning cannons and stuff. So how are they set up? Uh, we could probably also gamble this. Okay. Wow, we, we won. Went, went from seven to seven. This is a dragon ogre. It's a, it's a big, scary dude. Uh, look, hold on, can we, is there a place where there's a Dragon Ogre adjacent to another unit that we can use for scale? They're big, they're, um, they're a little bit frightening, but I don't think they're hugely dangerous to us at this point with us having Halberd Storm Vermin. There we go. So that's a Saurus, and you've seen that those are considerably larger than our rats. That's what a Dragon Ogre looks like. Uh, they also have, where is he? Here. They also have a Dragon Ogre Shoggoth, which for some reason is many times the size of other Dragon Ogres. Look, I'm not going to try to pretend that I understand the ecology of the Dragon Ogre. It just it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Anyway, uh, these things, we'll fight them with Storm Vermin. I'm fairly confident we can, we can handle them. My actual biggest concern is the sources getting up on the walls, which could be a real problem for us. Uh, are we set up in such a way... Hold on, why... Why does it put my units down on the walls in such a way that they don't have... Like, there's a tower over here that's just completely uncovered, and a ranged unit that is facing backwards. They certainly don't set their own units up like that. Okay, so now we have... Yeah, we actually have units in all of the tower boxes. So we'll get control of the towers. They brought four siege towers and a battering ram. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, we have a couple units of rat ogres, which will probably not be useful almost, in almost any way. We have up on the walls some clan rats, slingers and stuff. Then we have a couple units of, we have four units of storm vermin with halberds in total, right? Not really sure how I want to arrange them. There's absolutely no reason for the rat ogres to be right here, because the only thing they're good for is charging. So like, it doesn't it doesn't make any sense at all. To put them in a place where they can't charge. Also, it set my siege stuff up facing sideways for no... I feel like uh, maybe we're being a little bit mistreated here. Right, I'm going to set the warp cannon battery up here. If they get this gate open, we're going to immediately fire through it. Because so much of their army strength is tied up in these dragon ogres, even if they take the wall, which they will... Because we don't have melee troops that are capable of holding sources in small areas. Um, they still have to take the gates to actually like try to win the battle. And we'll just deal with them when that happens. So the catapult is facing this way and can help to shoot at the siege towers. I don't know how many siege towers we're going to be able to break. We could probably get at least one. We have a plague priest who probably ought to be over here. He only knows Pestilent Breath, which is going to be fine. Actually, no, it's not. It's weak against armor. All of their units are heavily armored. And then he has Blessed Filth, which is actually quite good. All right. Why do I not have control of all my towers? There we go. All right. Uh, let's work on... It's weird that the crosshair turns, turns not red anymore when it's hovered over an enemy. That's kind of like... The opposite of what you would expect. Uh, my guess is that this this um, siege tower is already dead. This one might need some help, or we could try working on this one. Also, I don't know why these are Bretonian siege towers because this is definitely not a Bretonian army. Let's um let's shoot at this one first because it's definitely in range, while the other ones are sort of on the edge, and then we'll uh, we'll adjust that as needed. There's nothing we can do with the Warp Lightning Cannons to make them actual fi actually fire. So I guess that's it. I mean, over here we can try our best to focus on the Siege Tower for a moment. And then you guys, yeah, just shoot at whatever you can shoot at. So the city does have 
upgraded defensive buildings. The towers are firing the upgraded tower projectiles, which means they'll actually do fair damage. Yeah, you can see it's not bad. We're, we're doing all right damage to these, um, these siege towers. I sort of wonder, actually... We might be able to finish that one off. We might be able to... Mm, I don't know if we'll get all of them, but we'll probably get more than one. Yeah, they're all out of your area. Come on. I can't believe that's still up. It definitely... It definitely should have fallen there. Okay, let's um, re-aim the catapults here. We might be able to get this tower. Maybe. If we get pretty lucky. Uh, work on... Yeah, you guys work on the unit of... The unit pushing the battering ram. It's actually, like... It's actually looking pretty good for us. I don't want to get overconfident or anything here. But, like, we might be able to get them down to just one siege tower. Which would be uh, would mean that a lot more of their units get tired out before the battle actually starts. And you've seen in the past that that's not necessarily a recipe for disaster. Like, we've won lots of battles with very tired units. Come on. One more shot. Ah, that sucks. Unfortunately, in the case of a siege tower, anything less than total damage is effectively no damage at all. Alright, I'm going to halt and then reauthorize fire at will here just so that the, uh, the catapult starts picking its own tar uh, targets again. Alright, so we got clan rats. Let's, uh, let's get this guy to drop a warp lightning right in the middle of them. Sorry, he has to run over here a little bit more first. Uh, and then we need, if we have the ability to put a real unit in, we should probably put a real unit in over here. I guess we kind of don't have another fighting unit up on the wall. The towers are doing a good job against these guys. It looks to me like these dragon ogres might be rushing the gate. So we'll leave one unit of storm vermin over there. I'll bring another one over to here. I don't want to don't want to put them directly in front of the thing cuz we don't want to block the rat ogre charge. And you guys are just going to try to turn and fire, I guess. We could send plague monks up on the walls to try to help. I'm I'm loath to fight the sauruses up on the wall very much if we don't absolutely have to, is the only thing I'm thinking. Because it would be really cool to have lots of fresh troops down here for when they come over the wall, and we can we can press superior numbers upon them. Yeah, let's maybe just um try to have the slingers disengage. I'm confident that our clan rats can hold these guys in place for a while at least. And remember, these uh, these plague priests effectively have uh, the priests we have here effectively have no magic. Wow, that's incredible damage. Um, effectively have no skill points, so I do not expect them to be able to. Uh, they do not have the ability to um, overcast their spells or anything. Yeah, I'm really surprised by the amount of damage we were able to deal with that warp lightning. I guess a bunch of those figures must have been at low health. Maybe they take damage when the tower gets hit with siege stuff while they're in it. You guys need to back up. You guys need to move forward. And we need to warp lightning again just as soon as we can because they're still very tightly bundled over here. We actually did break that unit of sources. Okay, that did, that did an amount of damage. That makes more sense to me. Yeah, they're having a hell of a time just like actually getting anything done over here. All right. This is the moment that these guys have been waiting for. So the Warp Lightning Cannons are doing good work. Obviously we have... Um, obviously we have some troops in the area who should be good at the type of fighting we're doing over here. There's no reason for us not to have the Rat Ogres charge in as well. And honestly, I probably, I probably should have moved these guys closer to the gate earlier on. Uh, we'll have them approach from this side for the moment. Uh, over here, we're breaking these enemies. Over here, 
This is as good a place as any to put down some Menace Below charges. The odds are these guys, these Menace Below units, are going to break and flee immediately. But that's true pretty much everywhere. And here, if they can buy the, um, the Storm Vermin even a little bit of time to deal damage without being attacked, that would be very valuable. Just like a small amount of distraction is all we need there. Make sure we keep doing that. Here comes their lord, which is like a pretty minor concern, it looks like. I'm going to have these Globadiers come back over here. You guys should be helping with this. Looks like this is going all right. They just went into Frenzy, which is pretty bad for them, because my impression is here we're going to see them get uh, completely cut to pieces. While they are frenzied, you know, they can't they can't run away, even if it would be a really good idea. I'm gonna try something. Yeah, that worked. <laughs> They're freaking out. Did you see that? We were just about to eat those guys and they freaking exploded. Guys, turn around. Let's keep this spell going. But we are we are pretty comfortably winning the battle on this side. Over here, not as much. But, you know, we're doing damage at least. The Storm Vermin are getting things accomplished. Okay, seeing a, uh, an army-wide waiver. I think they're going to break. Yep. The Warp Lightning Cannons were actually pretty useful there. I don't know why they thought that attack could work. I mean, I don't know why they even pressed up against the wall of the settlement. You know, for a while there, they were recruiting new troops, and they were. It, lo it looked like they were maybe going to build up an army that could do something, and then they just committed to the uh, to the siege and the the building uh, building siege towers way too early. I think about that battle if they have even one full stack. If this army just has twice the number of sources in it, uh, let's say they don't get any more elite units or anything, just six more units of sources. That's probably a one battle right there. Very strange. Very strange indeed. Well, we don't really care about the casualty replenishment rate of this um, settlement, so I think we can just take the money here. And then this is going to be very, very easy for Vomik to clean up now. It was already going to be pretty easy. Yeah, I don't know what the hell those guys are doing. But listen, I'm not going to complain too loudly about my enemies being incompetent, at this moment. In general, you know, I'd like to be challenged and stuff, but right now we have a lot going on. <laughs> nice to be able to run in here and just get some stuff taken care of. Okay, so zero losses. That's a lovely thing to see. Uh, now, he did have this other stack that he chose not to bring to the battle for some reason. Again, they probably would have won the battle if he had had this group of Sauruses. This is ridiculous. The auto-resolver is uh, overdoing it in our favor quite considerably here. I'll take it, though. Alright, the Celestial Storm is destroyed. How dare you try to take advantage of my distraction? Alright, you, <laughs> you gotta get over to where all the stuff is happening now, buddy. There are things on the line. Uh, I don't think we have any other... Uh, any other rogue armies within our borders that we have to worry about. So how do we want to deal with Rapunz de Leoneste? I mean, she just kind of didn't move away from us. Is it as simple as running two stacks into her? Probably, because the only other thing around is this dwarf army, right? And even if Vikram Starkeeper shows up on the next dwarf turn to try to punish us for doing this, I don't think he's going to be able to beat us. Who leads the attack? Probably Snitch. His army's a little bit better suited. So you move in to here first. Okay, well that's pretty easy. I mean, not that I was expecting it to be a challenge. Did we get enough XP to put Toxidin up to... Ooh, actually, we've never defeated her before, right? So double XP when fighting Bretonia. That's weird. Research rate up and growth up. Okay, that's not a bad trait. And no, Toxidin did not, in fact, get enough XP to become immortal. That's a shame. 
So Vikram Starkeeper. I mean, there's no way he can make that distance in a single move, right? I'm thinking we're probably safe to go ahead and resettle this. We'll do it with his army and we'll have Snitch just wait right outside. And, I mean, we may as well resettle it at level 2. We have all this food and it's just going to go to waste otherwise. Uh, you are pushing toward the Death Master's Sigil. Do you want the weapon strength or... Percentage boost to his low level of health feel pretty bad as a survivability move. I think let's just keep making him better at fighting lords. And then we will move... Uh, come on, I want to be able to move on the ground in front of this settlement. As you do say. In ambush mode. Because obviously the best case scenario is Vikram Starkeeper sees Toxidon's army in this reduced state runs directly at them, triggers the ambush, and then we get we get to come in as reinforcements anyway. Alright, that's tremendously important. That's pretty important. Get get this done. Okay. We can rebuild. We can recover from that damage very, very quickly. What do we do with Ikit Claw? Does Ikit Claw fall back toward Agromigdal under the the, the, the question of what we do with Ikid Claw has a lot to do with what we think the dwarves are going to do. If we think they're going to march, we want to try to intercept. If not, if they're just going to sit here, then having Ikid Claw on defense duty is kind of wasting his time, and it might be better off that we try to move him somewhere else to set up a, a more interesting ambush. My guess is they're just going to sit around and do nothing. They're in... They're in perpetual recruitment mode, which is a thing you see the AI fall into sometimes, where it just, like, it seems to forget what it's doing and gets stuck in a loop of needing to recruit. So we're going to... I guess we can just kind of, like, fall back to the upper... Um... Here we go. Here's a spot where we're not suffering. Let's kind of fall back to this area and see see what they do later. Maybe even fall back to Galbaraz. I guess we don't really have anything else of great import for him to do, though, right? He should fall back in case Deathmaster Snitch needs backup. Yeah, we'll do that. I'll I'll march over to here. That'll keep us nice and safe, but still in position to uh, change the plan next turn if we need to. All, right, all you guys could just run home. We don't really need to take over the Goro Madni Mountains. There's nothing here of value. I mean, they have ports and they have iron, but we already have iron in our trade routes. I don't think I'm going to bother taking these. I think we're, we're just going to have all these armies run south. There's nothing else to be done up here. We don't need to worry about the state that they're in or anything, because they're going to be running through friendly territory for a long time. We've got a lot of replenishment time ahead. Uh, we also have all of these agents who pretty much just need to do the same thing, right? I don't see... We should probably send one or two of them west. Wait, did I... Is Sh one of these guys... No, not, neither of these guys is Shife. Shife is over here. Shife is the one that we were going to send to the... Um, to the Bretonian north. The ex-Bretonian north. Because we are going to probably need more than one army playing defense over there. Stunkrich. Stunkrich probably needs to creep southward. We don't have a good sense of where the Lizardmen armies are, right? This is the last place I can be in before taking Mountain Pass attrition. Yeah. Oh, I could get I could get all the way into their territory, I guess, safely. Let's do it. Let's perform a scouting mission. Hmm, rocks to long. Do we need to fall back? I guess I'm not afraid of rocks to long. And we can fall back through the mountain pass if we get attacked. Yeah, this is fine. This is fine. We'll just press them. Uh, Queek has some guys to take out. And then this is... This is actually the last rebellion, right? I know that I've said that <laughs> more than once. But I believe this is now actually the last rebellion we should face. We should have our public order under control from now on. I think that might be our last army, right? 
Yeah, okay. Somewhere. Myrta has a level up to spend. And then I don't know what we're going to do with him. I don't think there's anything particularly valuable for him to do. Harassing these dwarves isn't getting anything done. I right, try to kill this guy. Go try to murder a paladin for us real quick. Okay, well, you gave it your best effort, I assume. We also have Erat here, who is being harassed by this dude, but we're too exhausted to do anything about it. Let's just fall back. Okay, so we have some important things we, we do have to deal with. Uh, first of all, this province is losing approval for some reason. Let's start working on that a little bit. You know, to be perfectly honest, Oakenhammer doesn't have a um it doesn't have a trade good or anything. I'm just gonna build another bell. You know, it's all it's all income, it's all the same. Karak Dromar, uh we don't really need walls, but we also don't really need anything else. Alright, money making structures everywhere. And then I do wanna go up to Wolfenberg and just keep an eye on things. We are positive here. In Hergig, we... I mean, we can spend some gold upgrading bells and stuff next turn. Is there any place where we are still red and falling on public order? In the Eastern Border Princes, we are actually in pretty bad shape. Is that the Giant Home Mountains? This is... Uh, provincial instability, though, this will wear off. We do need to uh, we do need to build bells. This is this is we're far enough away from this being a problem though that can happen next turn. That's not a big deal. And in everywhere else, we are nope. Jafar is also a, a small issue, but we're, sorry, we're already fixing that. That's that's dealt with. So okay, next turn we should be able to easily fix all of the remaining issues that we have there. So I guess we are, uh, I guess we're good. Should try to make sure that I am either building or upgrading as many, uh, scavenge piles as we can. Akendorf has a slot open. Let's put one up here. Karakern has a slot open. Okay. Just gonna keep all of that income, uh, in coming, coming in. So, Vikram Starkeeper might fall for our ambush. That would be cool. I don't expect to see a lot of movement out of these guys at all. I have no idea what the Bretonians are doing. We don't actually have vision of Xandri, so we can't see how well that thing's going. There are no elves on the western coast to worry about at the moment. What the hell is Vashnar doing? Who are you at war with again? The dwarves? The elves? Okay, you're, you're at war with all of our enemies. Well... I have no idea what he's doing, and it's unlikely that he's going to do anything that might actually help us, just given his positioning. So I guess we don't really need to be too worried about it. And we are one vial of warp fuel away from making another doom rocket. Maybe we should uh, recruit a warlock, uh, a, uh, a warlock engineer, rather. Just to make sure that we're pressing hard on the uh, on the warp fuel supply, because we do need to have a bunch of it. We want we want to be acquiring a little under one barrel per turn, right? Because it's very important to us that we be able to create rockets. Eh, very important, it's overstating, but it's kind of important to us that we be able to create rockets on uh, on cooldown. So this is what happens usually with the. Um, AI versus Skaven AI battles is that at some point the non-Skaven AI in the war thinks that they've won and they back off because uh, they can no longer see settlements owned by the other Skaven player. I think we're going to do this manually, um, both because I think I will outperform the auto-resolve and because I think if we if we hit the auto-resolve button right now, it's going to kill several of Toxidon's units. We probably don't need to bring in extra menace below charges because I bet the battle won't last long enough for us to use more than we uh more than the four we have for free. They've fallen for our ambush, and this is an army that is pretty vulnerable to being ambushed. We're definitely gonna take some damage from those giant slayers. Like they they legitimately might kill a couple of our storm vermin units. It's obviously it would be it would be ideal for them to stick around. But 
on the whole, this should be pretty good. And it should be a thing that the, the one army can get accomplished. We shouldn't actually need the reinforcements. So we're going to set up two units of rattling guns like here. And two units of rattling guns, I think, on the other side up on this hill. Just to give us really, really good coverage. And then, uh, sorry, let me get let me get this out of the way so that we can all see. Wow, gambled it up to 22. Obviously, we also have all of the Doom Flayers back here. This is a big, big problem for them. We have only five units of tough melee, and then we also have the Eshin Triads. Eshin Triads are, without question, just rushing the ranged. A couple units of Poisoned Wind Mortars, who should probably be, like, back here. Yep, those are pretty good cones. Uh, we're going to have the Storm Vermin with shields ready to fight those guys. We're going to have... You can probably just have all of the other Storm... All of the Storm Vermin halberds start back here. And the, the Giant Slayers will get to us. There's nothing we can do to stop it. We don't need to be in a big hurry to give them access. Uh, Globe of Deers up here on the hill. The Globes are... um. The globes are uh, arced projectiles, like arrows, so we can, even without a height advantage, we can shoot over our own units pretty cleanly. And then the warp fire throwers are the ones that it's hardest to get good value out of, because they do kind of need direct line of sight. Have them right here, have them do that, and hope that the giant slayers don't go directly after them. We'll put Snitch over here, in case they do go directly after those guys. And then, of course, we have the Hell Pit Abomination, which we do not want to be near the Giant Slayers, because that is really realistically the only way it could take meaningful damage during this battle. And then we have um, a unit, an army that will be mostly useless coming in over here, but they do have some catapults. They have, they have two units of one catapult each, which will actually be meaningful here. Okay. I don't know that we need to give the Rattling Gun groups uh, explicit orders. Probably not. You can just run in. It's just... Pick some units of ranged for you all to go after. You get in kind of in the middle. Uh, let's have explicit attacks on these dudes from the Doom Flayers. We probably want to start the Poisoned Wind Mortars on the enemy melee. Maybe like there. And then we have the Storm Vermin rush the rear enemy melee to try to keep them from... Um, turning around and getting getting into the storm vermin's way too much and you are just gonna kind of wander over here somewhere we're gonna we're gonna see how the giant slayers react to this move we should see an awful lot of deaths awfully quickly here all right the whirl of weeping blades is engaged if he holds them all in place while the mortars come in that's gonna be really bad for the dwarves those are your primary concern right there. Oh, I forgot. Uh, all of the melee should be off guard mode. Feel free to chase your targets. I'm going to have the Poisoned Wind Globe of Deers start aiming up toward the Slayers a little bit more. You can see we're already starting to take some significant damage on that one. Or on that front. Uh, you guys need to pursue the runners as best you can. I don't think those siege crews are going to last very long. Obviously, now let's not let let's not let anyone escape here. And over here, we could at least have these units try to approach. My suspicion is the battle's going to be over long before they arrive. Also, I guess you can try to run up. Maybe we could, uh, maybe we could get into a place such that we could fire a spell off. Maybe we're gonna have the rattling gunners approach. These guys still have a little bit of an angle. All right, somebody get in there. Let's come down on the back side of these guys. Snake's just taking a lot of damage.
He's done a really good job of holding a very large number of enemy units in place, though. Okay, Slayer's almost slain. Let's have Snitch disengage. Employ some Verminous Valor. Blow up and then run away. That's actually pretty effective. Uh, all Rattling Guns. Giant Slayer unit. Everybody else, stay the hell away from them. Okay, there we go. Very, very easy. I do love a good ambush battle. We took 190 total losses, um, and those losses are very concentrated, right? My suspicion is that the auto resolver would have would have done a lot more damage to our army than this, but the auto resolver's damage would have been probably spread out a little bit more evenly, and so might have healed off faster. Like this unit and probably the Stitch himself are going to retain some wounds for probably like two or three, eh, probably closer to the... It's probably actually three or four turns at our current replenishment rates. That said, Eat Captives does very close to nothing here. So as much as I want to replenish quicker, that's probably not actually worth picking. Stupid ghost dads just running around ruining all my stuff. God, I can't wait until we can do the only thing that will deal with them. Oh, we do have a we have a settlement all the way up as nor as far north as the Bay of Blades. We should probably have a look at that. I don't actually know what the deal is with that. Luan Leonkar entered the uh, entered the plagued city on purpose, which hopefully is going to end up with his army not being ready to fight anytime soon. If that plague can successfully just weaken a couple of enemy armies long enough for them to not come over here and bother me for a while, I will absolutely take that. And Itza, which had been destroyed, has re-emerged. That means somewhere uh, they spawned as a rebel faction. A city that used to be theirs went down into rebellion. The rebels reclaimed the city, and so the and and became the faction once again. Uh, it is time to test how loyal, devoted your warlords are. It just says Lost Plateau. This is not the name of an army. Uh, you know what? Lo loyalty plus one. I do not. Okay, Vomic. Vomic is having loyalty issues. He's also pretty far away from the fight. I think we can afford to. Uh, lay down the infection on his guys. By the time he makes it to the front, he'll be fine. Alright, so the first thing I want to do this turn before I commit money anywhere else is make sure we are okay everywhere that loyalty is negative. Everywhere the public order is negative. Here, okay, we have a bell one turn away from upgrade. So yeah, this is handled. In the Eastern Border Princes... In three turns, that will be solved. So we're probably okay. I might... Where's Matorka? It's way over there. No, it's probably not a good idea to remove the wall there. I was thinking maybe we'll just build another bell to make sure it never becomes an issue, but probably that's not actually smart. Alright, over here in Giant Home, we are going to build... A bell in the capital, and we are going to maintain this bell. We are also going to hopefully have the money to upgrade that bell before the end of the turn. Is there anywhere else that we are falling right now? Yeah, of course, Jufbar. We need to still deal with Jufbar. We also have to deal with... Okay, well, we're dealing with that in a different way. Alright, and then up here, the Bo Bay of Blades and the Tower of Crack, we're fine. I mean, we could be better in the sense that we could have um, enough public order to turn on taxation, but we're holding. Midland, we don't control Karaberg, but we're fine otherwise. Yep, Paravon, Paravon is Paravon. If I turned on taxation here, we may as well. The Southern Badlands, we're working on it. Okay, I think we're ready to actually do the combats of the turn. So. 
All right, it looks like Snitch's army is actually going to recover the next turn, unless we do some damage here. Toxidin will also be ready to uh, to do the thing soon. Wait, 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 wait. Sorry, Toxidin hit level 20. Pretty important that we remember to grab Immortality then. Like, real Migdal doesn't really need an upgrade. What is Tic-Tac-Toe bringing against us? So he's got some Temple Guard. Those are pretty elite infantry. He's got some Sauruses. Salamanders are, uh, are a pretty weird short-range siege unit kind of thing. They're big dinosaurs that belch fire, which is neat. He's got a bunch of tra uh, traditional dinosaurs. I'm a little surprised to see how few flying units he has, given that his whole gimmick is flying units. Maybe the AI, the AI does not really understand that. Uh, all right. Arat, you have to turn around because we've lost vision over here. My guess is we're going to find, yep, all three of those dwarf armies just sitting around doing nothing. Not a shock. Earn ourselves a little bit of free XP. Oh, no, sorry, Pestilic. She's level 40 already. We did not get anything. We should probably take out Tic-Tac-Toe. I think I'm going to leave Toxidin out of this. We, we should we should have this. We should very much have this. Especially, yeah, I was going to say, especially if we hit an ambush, the AI will, the, uh, the auto-resolver will just give us a huge victory. I don't know what that army was doing. Ooh. That is a really good trait. And then actually, Toxidin could go grab Vikram Starkeeper without losing anything, probably. We may as well. There's no reason to let this guy live. I think... Yeah, I was going to say, I think they're going to make us probably manually resolve this, but our troops are in good enough shape that this should not be a big deal. Do we want to bring food just, like, to, just to make this easier? I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and bring extra charges. We probably won't need these, but I would rather uh, need them and not have them than... Wait, I would rather have them and not need them than need them and not have them. So we will, if we are going to err, we will err on this side. So the only thing that can really go wrong here is that we could take too much damage from the cannon before the thing resolves. Uh, my guess is that this will not be an issue. So I want to move the catapults over to here. I, I don't want these trees to play any part in this battle at all. I put you in a position where you could actually attack. Same deal for you guys. Uh, these dudes are already in pretty good position. Uh, we can have the poisoned wind mortars over here. So we're not we're not grouping up too tightly. Okay, these mortars are almost able to shoot at their siege stuff immediately. And then... Actually, yeah, I'm, I'm about to re reposition them back in the positions they're already in. Because those are the right positions. Okay. Uh, I guess just move forward. Uh, let's start with... Plague Mortars in on these Gunners, because that's the only large, healthy unit. And the moment they let me summon Menace Below Charges, I'm going to. Interesting that their cannons aren't just firing. Maybe they were disrupted too much by that initial blast? Well, I ran my, I ran my Lord up here specifically so we could do this. And then this, which I hope I led correctly. And now you should probably turn around. That was pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that. All right, this should be just about over then. Even if they do turn the ranged units around to, uh, to attack us immediately here, the ranged units are small enough in number that they're unlikely to do anything meaningful. I just threw away a bunch of food as a security blanket, basically, and I'm totally fine with it. Because we were, let's be honest, we were going to lose all that food anyway. Good 
Okay. Uh, hey, all gun units. Handle this. Guard mode off. Like, just make it happen. That guy's about to have a really bad day. Also, all of the siege units are firing at him. Is he going to be able to escape? I don't know. The Jezails will probably finish him off. But in any case, his army is in a is in a mode where they don't get to move away from battle. So this is pretty free. And indeed, 100% of the enemy uh, enemy kills came from that cannon. They shot me one time. It is a shame that we are not going to be able to use all of this uh, all of this winning to actually push anywhere, because. Boy, the dwarves are being very careful with their push. Uh, I will take a leadership buff. Alright, then you guys obviously march mode back to the city. Okay, we're not quite going to go back to full right away, or uh, this turn, but we're going to get close. Who has unassigned skill points? A warlock engineer who it looks like has pretty much all of the important stuff. Okay, you guys have a very straightforward turn. Actually, one thing I guess I don't have a plan for is what's the best way to get where we're going? I get the the best way is probably just through Dragonfire Pass, right? Which I guess yeah, I guess this is the right thing to do here. Alright, so you guys are all running. I guess we, get, we gotta get these heroes running too. I still think even with all the manual selection and whatnot, it's still it's still faster to do this than it would be to watch them complete their orders if we gave them a multi-turn move order at the end of each turn. Uh, we could probably have you go back via the road here. Everything's fine in Wolfenburg and the gold is already up. Uh, you know what we could use in Wolfenburg is an Arcane Generator. Also, we don't actually have a Rubbish Pit yet. In Zavastra, uh, we're working hard, I guess. Okay. Who else still needs orders? Mamek. Mamek is going to spend a couple of turns at full sprint. I guess it doesn't really matter whether we end our turn in an attrition area. We're taking attrition already. There's nothing we can do about that. Stunkrich should be able to just attack here, right? Yeah, his army's large and terrifying. So that'd be a pretty easy win. I think we probably took more damage there from the auto resolve than we would have from a manual. Get some walls up around Mount Arachnos. Now, one thing I have no idea about is whether or not we are actually... Um, whether or not we are going to be able to so easily take back our gold mine. We don't know if they're defending Karak Zorn at all. We do know that it only has the base level recruitment structure, or um, garrison structure. Seven is not a lot of garrison. And Ikit Claw doesn't really need to report to the defense of Agro Migdal. We're in, we in fine shape on that. There's absolutely no reason for Snitch to be all the way over here either. We can just come back and hang out. So I guess we're not needed down here to attack. The Dark Elves took this stuff and are actually holding it somehow. I, I can't believe <laughs> that they haven't been pushed off. I guess Ikit Claw just moves kind of generally southward. We stop somewhere and go into ambush mode just so that we're not uh, not broadcasting our position easily. Alright, who do we still have? Queek. We still have Queek. Uh, how are we doing on public order here? Well, we're about to be doing... Uh, no, never mind. Next turn, we're about to be doing better. And I guess at this point for him, probably the best way to come down is to go through this pass over here. And then we'll like we'll get into the water near Myrmidens and just sail down to Granty Mingle or something, or maybe maybe even the beach north of Gorgazon, depending on what that whole situation looks like. 
by the time he gets down here, which is still several turns away. On the whole, our uh, our whole situation here is going pretty well. Things are things are more under control than I think they ever have been at any point, any other point in the uh, the series. Which is nice. It's nice to be in good shape for a change. Look, like we we have spent a lot of episodes and at this point hundreds of turns in the desperate scrabbling mode. Was that army near Malekith plagued? Is that an army that had caught the plague from our, our initial city and then walked it all the way over to the Black Pyramid? That's pretty good. It, man, man, I sure hope that plague is doing the thing that we put it down there to do. Which is to say to distract the, uh, the enemy armies and just keep them off of our ass for a couple of turns. Man, stupid ghosts. These ghosts are way too good at assassinations. It doesn't really matter. It's not like my assassins are actually doing anything out there in the field. It's just annoying. It's annoying to see us consistently lose to these stupid ghosts. I wish there was, like, anything at all you could do against them. The only way you can really deal with them is to um, defeat them in battle. If the army they're in loses a battle and they get damaged badly enough, you can get them off the table for a little while. For the most part, you just have to suffer through whatever nonsense they feel like they want to do. It's one of the great downsides of going to war against the dwarf player. Alright, well... Fomic is loyal again, because who doesn't love having all of their troops slowly murdered? We do get to keep Vision over here for a little while, for the rest of the turn at least. We're going to need more vision. We gotta make sure that those if those dwarf armies leave Gorgazon, we gotta know about it. And I don't really know what to do with the armies from Agril Migdal. Well, okay, again, before we forget, nice and early in the turn here, let's make sure that we deal with this situation. Get the Bell building in Aberheim. Here at Grenstadt, also get a Bell building, I guess? Why not? And then we may as well do that. As long as we're here looking at it, you know? I'm going to save the rest of our money, though. So, Vomik, uh, next turn, will not be suffering any real attrition. Right? Isn't that effect supposed to... Yeah, one more turn. Alright, his army's going to be in rough shape for a little while. It's fine. They'll, they'll probably be healthy by the time they get back to the front. At least I hope so. Because we could always use more force. Okay, over here, you probably want to come down. Alright, you want to cross the river this turn. So we've got Rem Mute and Hadar already. Stonecritch. Stonecritch is probably going to want to approach a little bit more carefully. Can move to here. Is there a place where I have the movement to go into ambush mode, but I'm not in the mountain pass anymore? Looks like right, right here it says we have 25% movement range left. We'll see. Okay, that that time they meant it, and Karakzorn does look relatively undefended. And by relatively, I mean completely. It looks 100% undefended. All right, you're exactly where you need to be. So we have to decide what we're going to do with those armies at some point. I'm going to move everybody else first. All right, Shif has a pretty easy job. Are we actually okay on public order in all these places? The answer is kind of, sort of. We don't actually have enough public order to turn on uh, taxes, which is... Which means we're not really okay. 
All right. So I think it is now, you know, we've done everything else. What do we want to do with these three armies? There's nothing to push back for. We could try to get way south. I don't know if that's... I don't know if that's necessary. I mean, we're going to have to wipe out Tlaqua. So we could just cross the uh, cross the Dark Elf territory. Thing is, I don't want to leave this area too undefended. At some point, those dwarves are going to go somewhere. They're going to remember how the game works eventually. Also, it would be nice for us to capture Kemri on account of it's on the list and everything. Also, there's a gold mine. We could... Uh, we could do some of this stuff. We could employ some ruination. We can make a Rat King and then begin the Vermintide. We're going to get a huge army that we definitely can't afford to pay for. Or we could build a makeshift workshop and then turn it into a Doom Sphere. That's a 15 turn build. The plan with the Vermintide could be we just we make a huge army and then we throw it away immediately. Just like hurl it at the nearby settlements. Not to not to lose it, but you know, to um to do a bunch of damage to the enemies nearby and then come in with our real forces. I kinda wanna try it. I kinda wanna just like have done that once. It would be six turns. Is Camry the place for it, or should I do it over here somewhere? Because we could do it in Bel Aliad. is another place that has a gold mine and it's a little bit more central to the enemy's whole thing uh, our, our plague has been spreading very effectively you can see here yeah it's actually it's kind of everywhere this really worked we have we have ruined a bunch of their stuff yeah you know what i'm gonna start building it in bel aliad we'll demolish that and then we'll uh we'll begin the construction of the vermintide there and we'll see how that goes so these guys can just try to make a move on Kemri, I guess. Uh, we have to be pretty cautious about how we do this, obviously. We don't want to leave ourselves too open. And moving through the desert is just crappy. Is there nowhere around here? Like, even in my own territory, I can't really move forward without taking big attrition. Yep, yeah, there's nowhere in this damn area. I wish there was, like, a, uh, like a, an equivalent of a lens from Civ V. Just like an attrition lens that we could lay down so that I could see where I can and can't stand. Because there are areas in the desert that are safe, like around the rivers. Right, we're going to march hard to the river then. Akit Claw is going to be responsible for the defense of Agro Migdal, I guess. Because obviously we don't want to send all of our armies out. Okay, I can make it just barely to reinforcement range. And I think Ikit Claw's army is the least useful in a marching battle. And he's basically just going to hold down the fort until backup arrives. So he'll go near Agra Migdal and hang out in ambush mode. Okay. Where do we want to do upgrades? Well... That seems fine. Yes, yes. And then, yeah, I guess we are, in fact, out of money, aren't we? We go through a lot of cash every single turn. So Malekith has the plague already. He could bring it to us. Obviously, we'd like to, uh, we'd like to hit Kemri first. But if it looks like the Black Pyramid's available, maybe we should just go grab it. I'm not actually even sure what we what we can build there. It has the landmark marker. I don't know if it's worth having. I don't believe it's on the list of important cities. Because they usually are not, you know, right next to each other like that. Ooh, Tlaqua might be sending an army for our homeland, maybe. Marathi... <laughs> For a second there, I was like, hey, look at that. The Dark Elves finally have a full stack. But that's a that's a terrible army. That's a whole bunch of their tier one melee troop. Well, I mean, listen, it's still guys. It's still the Dark Elves having bodies that they can contribute to the fight, which is better than the situation has been uh, in a while. 
Alright, we got pirates patrolling the bay, which is pretty great. I guess this is more of a sea than a bay. And Belagar Ironhammer feels like he could just come over here and take what is ours. This is the benefit of the enemy uh, not piercing your ambushes. Like even though uh, even though Ikiklaw had no chance of ambushing anyone, uh, the fact that he the fact that he is not visible to the enemy means they feel safe doing a thing like moving one army way out of position to try to grab that settlement. And we might have a harder time taking Camry than I was thinking. They have an awful lot of bodies in the area. We didn't actually check how big the garrison is. If it um, if it still has a very basic garrison, we might be able to fight those two stacks nearby without uh, without jeopardizing our ability to take the settlement. Let's have a let's have a quick look here. Bomic is always unhappy. Okay, no, they have a real a real big garrison there. So what does our movement range grant us here? We do not quite have the ability to hit this army. And your movement range is lower. Yeah. Hmm. How are we going to deal with this? Uh, next turn is the turn we can start the walls there. I guess we could just sneak along the river and go in ambush mode. Over here by the trees we have... Actually, our ambush success chance is listed as 100% everywhere along the river. We're very sneaky. All right, let's let Toxid and determine how far forward we can move, since he has less movement range in total. Okay, we are definitely a threat to Kemri next turn, potentially. It's a little tricky because it is quite uh, is quite well defended, and I think Ikiklaw needs to move out and south a little bit. We're going to have that attrition problem with him, unfortunately. Where can we go that is safe? There's no attrition right here. We can move this far forward. Then, actually, it looks like... Nope, we just weren't getting the... Uh... It just wasn't transforming our cursor for some reason. This is it. This is as far forward as you can go without suffering attrition. Well, get over there, I guess. Vomik does need some time in non-attrition lands now, because you don't get replenishment, obviously, while you're standing in the in an attrition zone. They found a place where there's a little bit of water and vegetation, at least. Okay, yeah, his army's gonna be fine. These guys need to get down to Dragonfire. I mean, I guess we could just skip the mountains with, uh, with Underway Stance, but... The place we're going is south of Dragonfire anyway. It's not like we're it's not like we're gonna have to turn out and then go back to the east. Hedar's good, Stonecritch is good, uh Queek needs navigation instructions. Shife wants to end up south. I guess we could we could have crossed it in Marienburg too. It doesn't really matter which way we do this. And then the heroes, uh, you need to, I don't know, get over here. So we have 19,000 gold left still. Find something to do with all this. Uh, it would be really cool if there weren't Bretonian agents in the area giving away our position. Looks like there's nothing terribly close. But getting rid of this guy is definitely useful. And then, I mean, we may as well upgrade this. Let's just get as many of those upgrades committed as possible. Uh, so we don't have to worry about population stuff again. What do we want to do in this slot? I guess just the, the growth building builds up to a good amount of gold per turn. It's not terribly expensive to upgrade. Uh, we'll go to four on this, but we will intentionally not upgrade that to level five. All right, so we don't have a lot of time left on this plague, which is good for us. Like, the, the timing works out really well, right? We're going to be approaching 
while all of their armies are still weakened from the plague, but, but, but without any risk of our armies catching the plague. A lot is going to come down to whether the Bretonians see through our ambush here and uh, what they choose to do with those two armies, whether or not they see through the ambush. So we might just try to rush Kemri, but if they reinforce Kemri, uh, Kemri and it ends up having 20 units in its garrison and also more than a full army worth of units just sitting around, we probably won't want to uh, push quite so aggressively. I don't know what Marathi is doing. Toxidin was seen, but not Deathmaster Snitch. That actually could end up being really good for us. Uh, depending on whether or not the Bretonians think they can get, they can get the two for one or the the two v one off against Toxidin, because obviously if just one of their armies runs over there to uh, to set up on me, then the ambush will be very very deadly. And with one of those armies gone, we could push Kemri probably very safely. Okay, or this will happen: the dwarves will wander into the ambush. I mean, I'll take that. I'll eat a dwarf. I'm not too good to eat a dwarf. Yeah, I don't I don't actually know who it was that broke Toxin Toxidin's ambush, but hats off to you, sir. You've done some good, good work for us. Ron is looking very weak right now. Critical failure to assault my units. That Bretonian hero is going home sad. Yeah, unfortunately, they did double reinforce Camry. That's gonna complicate things slightly. I'm not really sure what my smart play is from there. Oh, hey, pirates. Yeah, we could just get attacked on the ocean. I kind of wasn't even thinking about that. It would not be great. It would not be great for us. Uh, absolutely not. I mean, it's possible that that pirate army isn't even going to be up to the task of beating our guy. Uh, loyal Musk. Kemri. The city of Kemri remains loyal. Cool. Great. Uh, so, okay, it's Toxidin that we're talking about. Uh, Toxidin. Congratulations. You've been sprayed with the Overlord's Musk. It's really gross. My Musk is just, like, all over so many of my armies here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Low loyalty, whatever. Okay. So, before we quit for the episode, our other spy in the area got wounded, which is, like, very annoying. Okay, so Rapunzel the Leoness is here with a full army, and also we saw two other armies move in that direction. That is maybe going to be a problem. Alright, we do get the Deathmaster's Sigil. Seems powerful. Maybe. I mean, I guess we don't really know what it does, but it seems like it could be powerful at the very least. Uh, you have magic yet to learn, but I think I'm going to throw you in a doom, uh, doom wheel here. Give him Specimen Collector, which is very powerful, on the way to Brass Orb. I'm going to put him in a doom wheel for now, and then we'll, we'll pick up this stuff next, probably, and we'll finish off the magic after that. Wizard in a doom wheel is actually, like, pretty handy. And I think this is maybe the place where we're going to, uh, to leave it for today. We haven't done much this episode except stabilize. We've caught a lot of stupid enemies out in terrible positions. That's I'm just pressing the wrong buttons there. I was trying to hit the hotkey for my overlay. Uh, <laughs> so not a lot of forward motion here, but a lot of preventing backward motion happened this episode. Come back next time tomorrow when we make use of that plague and finally begin to build our Vermintide. And we'll see you then.